Hey, it's Nurse C. I'm here to talk to you today about one of my favorite. Hey, it's Nurse C. I'm here to talk to you today about one of my favorite ways to solve dosage calculations problems, ratio and proportion. So what I really love about um, ratio and proportion is that you don't have to be strong in math to use this method. A lot of the students um, that I've seen online have confessed that they're not really strong in math and that that really bothers them or intimidates them. With ratio and proportion, as long as you have your units matched up on both sides of the equation, you can cross multiply, divide, and find your answer. This can be used for heparin heparin problems, pediatric weight-based problems, or simple conversions. So if you're ready, we'll do a couple of practice problems, break each step down, explain why we are doing each step, and then we can see how to find these problems so you can start answering them confidently. Okay, so with ratio and proportion, there are a couple of rules that you have to follow. The units must be the same. So if you're using milligrams, they have to be the same on both sides. Units, milli equivalents, grams, whatever it is, they have to match. Units of volume also have to match and they must align. So if you have milligrams on top, you have to have milligrams on top on the other side. If you have milligrams on the bottom, you have to have milligrams on the bottom on the other side. So they must match on both sides of the equation. And X always has to be isolated. What this means is that one, once you cross multiply and divide, you have to do it to both sides. What you do to one side, you have to do it to the other. Then you multiply and divide. All right, so we will set our problems up as A over B equals C over D. So if you have a heparin problem and you have units per milliliters, so your units will be A, your milliliters will be B, then you must set the other side of the equation up as the same. Units, which would be C, over milliliters, which would be D. So once you have your equation set up, you can then multiply, um, cross multiply. So you will be multiplying the value of A times the value of D and the value of B multiplied by the value of C. So cross multiply. And then you divide and find it. 150 milligrams of Tylenol is ordered. 325 milligram tablets are available. So how many tablets are needed for one dose? We will use what we know first, 325 milligrams, and these are the same units, so we don't have to convert anything. One tab, and on the other side, we want 650 milligrams, and we don't know how many tablets, so we will label that X. We will cross multiply. And divide to get x by itself. What you do to one side, you do to the other. That crosses out, and you will be left with two tablets to give to your patient. All right, let's try another one. All right, so this is the problem, and you have 0.2 grams PO twice a day, the drug is 50 milligram tablets. How many tablets should you give? So we know that our units have to match. That's one of the rules of ratio and proportion. So you can do um, the conversion of the grams to milligrams in two ways. You can use ratio and proportion, or you can use this little trick that I have. So if you look at the initial uh, unit of measure, which is a gram, you would see that it is much larger than a milligram. So you're going from large to small, might to slight. So therefore you will go three decimal spaces to the right. Let me show you. So 0 0.2 and one, two, three. Add your zeros in and then that's your decimal. 
we know there are no trailing zeros in dosage calculations, and there you have it, 200 milligrams. Or you can solve it as a ratio and proportion problem. So we have 0 0.2 grams, and we don't know how many milligrams that is, but we do know that one gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams. You will cross multiply 0 0.2 times 1,000, and x will equal 200. So we will solve our problem now that we have the same units of measure. 50 milligrams in one tablet. And we want 200 milligrams. So we will cross multiply. And we're going to divide to isolate x. And we will have four tablets to give to our patient. Let's try another one. So we have the order, give 125 milligrams of penicillin. What's available is 500 milligrams per five mLs. How many mLs should you give? So we can set this up as ratio and proportion. We see that our units are the same, boom, boom. And we have our concentration of our drug. So we will start with that, 500 mGs per five mLs. And we want to give our patient 125. And we don't know how much to give them, so that's X. We're going to cross multiply. And we're going to then divide both sides by 500. Because what you do to one, you do to the other. And X will equal to 1.25 mLs. Let's try another one. A client weighing 41 kgs is prescribed levothyroxine sodium, 1.6 micrograms per kilogram per day orally. What dosage will be administered by the nurse? So we already have our weight in kilograms. If not, we would surely have to convert pounds to kilograms by dividing the pounds by 2.2. But we don't need to do that because it's already done for us. So we know that there are 1.6 micrograms per kilogram. And we have 41 kilograms and so we're trying to find out how many micrograms so of course we would cross multiply and divide and get our answer in this case one canceled out one so it equals x gentamicin 1.5 milligrams per kilogram IV every eight hours. Available is gentamicin, two milligrams per mL. The patient weighs 195 pounds. How many mLs will be given to the patient per dose? Per dose. All right, so the first step is going to be to change the weight from pounds to kilograms. And we'll set this up in the ratio. 195 pounds over X equals 2.2 pounds per one kilogram. We're gonna cross multiply and divide. So we'll do the same thing on both sides and we'll get X by itself and that will equal 88.63 kilograms. So now that we know the weight, the next step will be to find how many milligrams we will give the patient. So our order is 1.5 milligrams per one kilogram, and we will input our weight on the other side, kilograms. Oh, wait a minute. We have to put the kilograms on the bottom because the kilograms are on the bottom and the milligrams are on the top. So this will simply not work. But you see how easy it is to make a mistake if you don't pay attention. So we will put X over 88.63 
kilograms. I did this on purpose because I wanted you to see how easy it is for you to mess it up. So it's important. All right, so we'll cross multiply and we will get X. 132.94 milligrams. And now that we know how many milligrams we need, we can use our drug strength, um, the concentration that's given, and set up another ratio and proportion. So 132.94 milligrams over X. All right, and we'll need to cross multiply and divide by two so we can isolate X. And we will get 66.47, and you can round that to 66.5 mLs that you would give in the IV every eight hours. I hope this video has helped you uh, to understand how to use ratio and proportion to solve dosage calculations problems. I'll be making another video on dimensional analysis and desired over half. If you find these videos helpful, let one of your peers or colleagues cohort know and like, follow, share, and subscribe for a notification of a new video. I try to post throughout the week a daily dosage problem that I break down. And as always, be blessed.